you want to be able to play Slipknot or other heavy bands that are dropping all the way down to B or A. Most people will advise you to get a 7 string, get a 27 inch scale baritone or at least a 25.5 inch scale length strat or super strat but don't get a short scale Les Paul. A scale length is the distance between the nut and the bridge. The longer this distance, the less issues you have with intonation, string bus and you don't need the thickest gauge strings to achieve proper string tension. But it can be achieved with a Les Paul as well. Why would you want to do that? Let me put things into perspective. This is the ESP Viper with a 27 inch scale length. I've put both guitars starting from the same point at the bridge and look how longer the baritone is compared to the Les Paul. Why wouldn't you go with a baritone or a 7 string then? Well, I prefer the shorter scale of the Les Paul. It feels better in my hands. I don't like the big stretch of the baritone and I don't need an additional 7 string. It can be achieved in a Les Paul and I'm gonna explain what you need. players are trying to achieve lower tunings in affordable guitars that have the cheapest hardware possible and this is a hard task. If your guitar doesn't have this, you will probably need to upgrade. Intonation is key to sounding good in any tuning, but you need a good bridge to properly set it with the thicker gauge strings. If you have the budget, you should go with high output pickups that are not totally muddy as I demonstrated in my Goth Explorer video with the Fishman Moderns, they will definitely give you more clarity in lower tunings. Remember kids, setup matters. If you're not able to set the bridge height and intonation as well as the neck relief through the truss rod, get it to a proper tech. A tech will also check if all the frets are leveled properly. Frets that are not leveled properly are a common reason for fret bus. Fret bus is your biggest enemy in low tunings with short scale guitars. Most stock nuts can handle strings up to 56 gauge without having to be filed down. Last but not least, you need good tuners to hold the tuning with those heavy gauge high tension strings. If you're gonna be buying a cheaper Les Paul in order to play in lower tunings, you have to consider some of those things and upgrades that you need to do. The Goth Les Paul has some of these goodies from the factory and you don't need to upgrade. The specs on the Goth are pretty straightforward. We have mahogany body and I do believe this one features a maple top. You can see here where it was worn. It's not in the specs but I see it. Then we have a 3 piece mahogany neck and this is supposed to be rosewood by specs but I don't think this is rosewood. That's too dark. I've already polished the frets and cleaned the fingerboard. Here's a picture of an earlier goth with rosewood, nothing like the one that I have here. This is either rich white or some sort of engineered hardwood. The headstock features the Grover tuners, the goth cross and the Epiphone logo. A cool 12 fret Roman numero perloid inlay here. And then the pickups are the Alnico classics which were also originally in the Epiphone goth explorer that I reviewed. Epiphone, lock tone, bridge and tailpiece which certainly help with intonation. Pickups out of the way, let's check out the neck cavity and I'm gonna call this an attempt of a long neck tenon. At least it has been cut to accommodate for a long neck tenon but look how offset it is, the tenon. I'm gonna show you more of this in a minute. But let's discuss the maple cap and do you see the seam line? The specs do say mahogany body but they say nothing about a maple top. I believe this one has it because you see here where it has been worn. This is a lighter color wood. This is definitely maple. And here are the routings for the three-way switch and electronics. Here is the neck tenon from another angle. This is what I mean when I said it was offset. You see almost the finger length left here on the downside. Usually it's a bit more centered but in this case it's offset. These are the Aonico Classic pickups, HB6N open for the neck, BHC the compliance sticker and Epiphone etched. It is marked F for front or neck. The sticker on this one says HOT HB8B which stands for a HOT humbucker I guess and it is HOT indeed, you'll see when I measure it in a minute. LPCLS stands for Classic. Told ya, the bridge is pretty hot for a humbucker called the Classic at 13.74. The neck is at 
8.62 middle position is 530 and let's see if this kill pot works if I press it yep it cuts the signal I did not plan this the same day I reviewed this and play a slipknot riff they release a new video the controls are bridge volume neck volume bridge tone neck tone that is a kill pot as well a three-way switch this is the Epiphone Lock Tone to Nomadic Bridge Epiphone on the bottom. It has notches that lock to the struts at the body. Individual saddles held in place by a single spring, black of course. The tailpiece is also Epiphone Lock Tone and if I turn it around you will see the way it locks. These are not as high quality as Schaller, Goto and so on but they will do the job for low tunings. The body features a curved top and it is indeed a curved maple top as I already shown you. A little bit of wear to the satin finish here and the body also features this black pig guard which also had a black bracket but the owner lost it on this one. I wanted to include it so I put it on anyway. The official specs throughout the entire production claim that the fingerboards are rosewood but this is far from rosewood. Look at the 12th fret the perloid inlay, white side dot inlays, I think I have an educated guess of what happened here. Because this is the last production year of the Les Paul Golf, they used what they had available and I think this is either rich light or engineered hardwood. In my opinion, they all should have been with fingerboards like this. Look at it compared to rosewood. The nut can take up to a 56 gauge string without having to be filed down. You got the typical Epiphone headstock that features the Epiphone logo, the goth cross and the truss rod cover looks like this. Three screws are holding it in place and I love the way they print the logo offset to the side. It's a mistake probably but it looks like this. The truss rod is two way adjustable by a 4mm Allen wrench. The nut is approximately 43mm wide or 1.68 inch. The 12th fret is at 52.4mm or 2.06 inches. Thickness of the 1st fret 20.5mm or 0.80 inch. Thickness of the 12th fret 22.9mm or 0.90 inch. The typical Les Paul radius 305mm or 12 inches. My eyes and hands were not deceiving me, this is a pretty flat U-shaped neck. Doesn't feel too chunky though. Satin finish on the back that has worn on some places and become a little glossier. Nothing too serious like scratches and such. It looks good for a 5 year old guitar and this is what the cavity for the 3 way switch looks like. These were probably done in a hurry and you see the entire hole is a bit offside to the left. I'm gonna show you the electronics compartment in better light and here it is. Even though this Epiphone Goth was made in China, the pots are Jinsung made in Korea which is good. Here is a better look of the kill pot as well and a ground wire going from the bridge circling all the pots and the output jack. That's the cover for the three way switch, it doesn't have shooting on the back but I must say this is the perfect choice for the goth Les Paul because you see it's kind of glossy and satin at the same time. This is the cover for the electronics compartment, same plastic and it fits pretty well with the back of the goth black metal or goth rectangular output jack cover and the strap buttons had been replaced with locks. This is what the back of the mahogany neck looks like. It used to be satin finish like the body. That's what happens to satin finishes when they get in contact with skin. No volute, not much going on on the back of the headstock other than the serial number which reads 17, the year 2017, 06 June and the factory code which is 15 Qingdao China, I hope I am pronouncing it right. It also features Grover black tuners and these are pretty good especially for a cheap guitar. I suggest if you don't have these or anything better you upgrade to locking tuners for lower tunings. Speaking of lower tunings like drop beat they require thicker gauge strings like 1256 not even slinkies. 8.18 pounds, I was expecting heavier, at least it sounds heavy.
honest opinion, I love the Goth Les Paul. Especially the 2017 model year with the darker fingerboard, I love it, I would buy one for myself. Turns out this thing handles lower tunings without any modifications like a beast. Even though the pickups are a little muddier, you cannot go over 56 on the stock nut. It is still great for B, even drop A and such. No wonder Epiphone made these for almost 15 years and they were discontinued like 5 years ago, but I think at some point they will bring them back or something similar like this. After all, we always need a blacked out guitar like for example the Black Metal series by LTD ESP. We want the all blacked out Epiphone back. Of course, if the price is reasonable. This thing packs a serious punch even with the stock pickups and if you upgrade to Fishman or EMG you got a serious metal machine on your hands. I had so much fun with this one. Thank you guys for watching.